the CEO of Augmate. Uh, we have an enterprise software uh, for digital eyewear applications. I started the company two years ago as a way to create a clickable world for industries. Our motto is, the world is your desktop, and you'll see why in a minute. This is a video that we created for Walmart at their innovation lab. That's where we're sitting right now. So this is a concept video, and this is the uh, imagery that we're showing Walmart. There was a couple use cases that they were looking for, um, which I'll, I'll go into in a second. I'm just going to show a, a couple screens here. It's an eight minute video. I'm only going to show a couple more seconds. essentially using digital eyewear to place virtual information in the physical world. Uh, this is highlighting a little bit about uh, on-shelf availability, which is very important to them. Uh, the inventory isn't on their shelves, we can't sell it. So the problem that we solve is that information isn't where it's needed or expected. Uh, this creates an inefficient environment for deskless workers and people in the field. Uh, Augmate connects databases to digital eyewear. Uh, we do that to create visual efficiency tools. Um, there's an upwards of a 30% efficiency of time on task when information is within your field of view. So in other words, if you don't have to reference a paper-based manual or a laptop uh, and that information is within your field of view, there's an inherent time on task efficiency. <clears throat> what you see here, maybe my voice is loud enough, uh, we've got content management, content delivery, and content display. Those are our three pillars. That's our hardware and software stack. Um, essentially, our CMS, our content management system, acts as a bridge between uh, enterprise software and client databases to the digital eyewear. And it does that with database services. And then there's an Android application that runs on uh, the digital eyewear. Uh, our team creates templates and uh, there's holes or fields uh, within these templates and that brings in the information uh, from the databases. Uh, so in other words, uh, you, you'd be able to have uh, an enterprise uh, software of SAP, their warehouse solution, running on a server and bring that down to a warehouse picker that's wearing digital eyewear. Our team, uh, I'm Pete Wassell, I'm the CEO, I'm an ex-IBMer, uh, I've run $100 million programs for IBM uh, Eddie Quiros, that's our uh, MIT alum here. Uh, he's a serial entrepreneur. Uh, he's got expertise with um, 3D modeling and CAD. Uh, he's got a good eye for design. Uh, Drew Austin, our COO, uh, he's got a degree in entrepreneurship from Syracuse University. Patrick O'Shaughnessy, he's an expert in augmented reality and has 20 years experience in management and software. Uh, some of the value propositions that we have, <coughs> this is a hands-free system. Uh, we do P2P video sharing. So you've got the ability to see someone else's point of view because there's a camera on these devices. Uh, literally, you've got the ability to be two places at once. So if you talk about producti productivity, it's uh, pretty significant. Uh, we can offer compliance tools uh, for management. Our system is safer, more accurate, and reduces the cost of training compared to uh, traditional systems. And then there's less tangible benefits like uh, uh, employee satisfaction and customer satisfaction. We're talking with customers in every single one of these industries right now today. So the wearable technology market is expected to grow by 19% compounded annually over the next five years. Um, it's projected that there'll be 75 million digital eyewear devices by 2018. Uh, the same company, uh, ABI Research, predicted uh, if Google Glass was available today, even at its current price of $1,500, 20 million people would buy it in the U.S. alone. Uh, this is our competitive matrix. Um, there, there's definitely competition within this space. Uh, it helps validate the market to prove that it's uh, viable. Uh, we think that we're unique, yet more adaptable and more flexible than our competition. Uh, many competitors are focused on very narrow and limited market niches. We've got a multiplier effect. Uh, so two weeks ago, we signed a reseller agreement with AT&T. It was AT&T Global Business Solutions to resell our technology. Uh, they've got a, a tremendous sales force, an army of salespeople. The first customer they brought us was Walmart, and they said they have 100 customers after Walmart. 
Um, I just got back from Germany last week uh, where I met with UVEX, that's a safety glass company, uh, adding a digital component, asked us to do the software, and SAP, uh, SAP does the warehouse software. Uh, they passed us 10 leads of companies that want to access their software through digital library. So you can see there's a multiplier effect with the relationships that we've, we've built. I'd almost say it's an unfair advantage. Uh, besides Google Glass, we work with seven other digital eyewear companies. Uh, we're on a first name basis with the CEOs, and they pass us leads. How much more time? <laughs> okay, great. Okay. Uh, our, our advisor, right on the left here, uh, Kip Kokonakis, he was the CEO of MyView. This is the technology that's in Google Glass today. It's one of our advisors, our lawyers on the right. Uh, how we make money? Uh, <laughs> System, uh, system integration, uh, we'll make money off of licensing our platform and the number of enterprise users, uh, and we'll make 15% off the hardware. Um, I think it's pretty conservative as, as far as our revenue plan, uh, the number of pilots and full solutions that we plan on doing. Uh, we think that we can get up to 100 million in the end of year three. And I know I'm out of time. All right. Thanks. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I'm curious, how are you thinking about the trade-off between going broad and the competitors who are going narrow? How, how are you thinking about why you think that's a competitive advantage at this stage? Yeah, so um, some of the competition, the niche markets that they're going after, they'll go after, for example, the hospital sector or, let's say, military, something like that. They'll have a very specific uh, customer set. Uh, we've got, at this point, really three applications. We've got our general purpose uh, connection of the database, back-end database, to digital eyewear. Uh, we built a warehouse solution on top of it, and then we've got an uh, instructional application. Uh, so that's all we have really to date. Uh, if we had to pick a niche, we'd probably uh, really settle on the warehouse solution because even across those industries, every one of those companies are interested in that. Uh, we're talking with Toyota right now, automotive industry. Uh, it wasn't for assembly that they were looking for this solution. It was actually to do their, their warehousing. Uh, same thing with uh, Embraer Jet, another company. It takes uh, you know, a couple million parts to make a jet. They're looking for the inventory uh, kind of solution. So if we had to settle in on one thing, uh, that's probably what, what it would be. 70% of the customers are, are looking for that solution. The I'm not good with tech. The, <laughs> <laughs> the video that you showed was a demo. It wasn't the field of view of the person who was actually there was presenting the that sort of correct. thing that it could kind of be if you delivered the product in some Absolutely. kind of way. When will you actually have your product up and running in a way that people can use it functionally? So move it from the concept um, stage to the practical stage. So that was a three-year outlook. We did that six months ago. Uh, so I'd say it's two and a half years away. Uh, we get prototypes of the digital eyewear from the different companies. And I could tell you, I've shown that video to each one of them. Um, there is a waveguide technology that's not quite like this. This is kind of first generation uh, digital eyewear. And they all say they believe it's possible within definitely within two years, if not sooner. So you, you, you'll be an R&D shop for the next two and a half years. You'll start shipping product. It's in two and a half years from now? No, no, uh, let me, I'll just, I'll step back. What we found was uh, the user experience using the current generation of digital eyewear was not only difficult to achieve, but it wasn't the best user experience like what that was shown with the video. That will be achievable in, in two years. No, so do, what we do now, what so we can sell I want, now. I want to compress this down. Okay. When will you have a product that you're shipping and what will it do? We're revenue positive today. We've got customers today that have bought a solution and it's anchored to your field of view. So it's not, it's not anchored to the physical world, but we put it within the field of view and we, we sell that today. Right, and so year one is already going. You have how many pilots up and running today? Two, only two to this date. That's fine, that's fine, but at least I can understand. In revenue positive. Right, so you think in 2014 slash 15, you'll generate $25 million of revenue? I do, in two years. With the, with the pipeline that we have today, yeah. Can you tell us about the, the two pilots you have? I mean, who's piloting? Absolutely. And some of the results, I mean, how, what, proof that, you, that, that shows this works? Yeah, so uh, the two pilots that we have, the first one that we had was with Toyota, 
And really at this stage, uh, what companies are looking for, it's, a, it's an educational process. They don't even really understand all that this technology can do. Uh, so we put together a proof of concept, actually. It was software on digital eyewear that they were able to use with their stakeholders. So they took it around to their executives, their investors, and their customers uh, in order to sell within the company. Uh, the, second, um, the second client that we got is Zoidis. It's a spinoff of Pfizer. Uh, we gave them a half million dollar proposal uh, about three weeks ago, which they've now accepted. Uh, this solution is very different. Um, Zoidis does animal medicine. So Pfizer does, uh, yeah, I can actually, actually show something uh, you know, just real quick while I'm talking. Um, uh, Pfizer does uh, human medicine. Zoidis does animal medicine. So what they, they've asked us to do is actually go to their feedlots, uh, which are on farms, to be able to pull up information on cows, pigs, uh, th that type of thing for um, veterinarians. So they have the kind of information like uh, when was the animal born, what kind of feed does it take, what medicine uh, has it taken, uh, if it's been sick, who's its mother, where was it born, all that kind of information using digital eyewear. It's a use case that I never imagined six years ago, uh, but you know we got these customers and, and they give us use cases. But how do you, I mean, how do you focus on trying to capture a certain market and having so many different use cases. I mean, how can you build a sales team and the process and generate the numbers you have up there? Uh, Great with question. So many different use cases, you know? Yeah, so um, uh, at the end of the day, we, we honestly don't care what the data is. Uh, if you think about it, even the warehouse solution where it's inventory, whether it's a profile of a, of a cow or the specifications of an iPad, if that's stored in our, in our database, it doesn't matter. We're managing the pipeline that goes from the back-end database down to the digital eyewear. Uh, so it could be a lot of different, it could definitely be more than one use case. Uh, again, we'll try to focus on the warehouse in the beginning, uh, but we've got the ability to be ad adaptable and flexible. What's, what kind of a cost is a company looking at to use the product? Sure. Uh, we're offering our pilot solutions between uh, $250,000 and up to uh, $2 million. So for example, at the Walmart Innovation Lab, they've asked us to go to their distribution center, uh, actually 10 distribution centers. These are large facilities, um, a million square feet. They service 200 Walmarts each. Uh, to do 10 of those in a pilot, they, they told us uh, they thought it would be about $2.5 million. Uh, and it, that was roughly what we thought it would be as well. And that was just for a pilot study at 10 distribution centers. They've got 160. Nice. And nice touch, by the way, including the lawyer. In the <laughs> 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 yeah. Likewise. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. 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 Thank Take us through how you're getting to that number. I mean, what's the name? Because I saw like ten things yeah. on that slide. Yeah, I'll walk through it a little bit. So basically, the way the way that we're seeing the red. Um, Go to the way seeing, um, so the way this is working is that ultimately we're building a enterprise platform that we feel that will license out to customers. And it's really not about as much the niche, because we're, we're learning about the user interface and the user experience as we evolve. What we're doing is building the framework. And we're making it accessible. Right now, what we're seeing is that a lot of this is some customizations, more development. We're learning about the customer. So it's been like this evolution of technology where we're doing start with a proof of concept, then we go into pilot study. And as we go into the, from the pilot study, then we're going into the actual implementation. So most of the revenues, the most of the expenses right now are occurring from implementation and integrating into their system. But ultimately, what we're looking to accomplish is licensing of the database, the applications, and then scaling per users. Great, thanks. And just, just to follow up real quickly, we do want to productize this. So in other words, part of the money would go into automation, self-service for customers, uh, have repeatable solutions so that for each industry having the exact uh, application that they're looking for that we sell into that industry. Definitely. Great, Scalable. thanks. One question, go ahead. Thank you for the presentation. Just, just speak, speak up a bit. Thank you for the presentation, and I apologize if I missed this, but if you're speaking in front of the venture capitalists, presumably you're looking to raise capital. How much capital, and then what's the use of proceeds, and what's that look like? Yep, so that is, that is a great question. We're gonna, 
I'm going to actually, we can show this, but let's just, yeah. let's, um, so there's some stuff going on with the general solicitation rules. Yeah. Doesn't answer the question. Okay. You <laughs> <laughs> get yourself into trouble. All right, very good. Anything else? I think that's it. Okay. Great Thank job. Thank you.